That is a sweet presence of God in the house. Do you feel that? I don't know uh, if you love brand new songs or not, but that new song, uh, the thing that got me, the thing that gets me is like, the, in the second verse, it talks about how we come sit at the feet of Jesus and that we're just pouring out our love on him and that it would be something sweet to him. I know incense isn't a word that we use a lot, but it's in the Bible, <laughs> if you don't know. But what a sweet thing that we can come and we can just pour out our, our gratefulness, our gratitude. There's something that's deep inside of us that sometimes we don't even understand, but when we pour it out, he receives it. How beautiful. I love it, I love it, I love it, and I love you so much. Tonight, uh, we are here, but there's a good portion of our lovely family that they are walking where Jesus walked. Am I jealous? Yes, I am. Next time, I'm going with. I don't know who's with me here, but you ain't going without me next time. So anyway, um, we just, we bless our pastors and um, so many of our elders are there and our amazing volunteers. And I know that they are just having the time of their life. I have wanted to go for almost 25 years. So there you go. Special speaker for tonight. It is Bishop Owen McGregor. And we, we are so honored to have Bishop Owen here with us from time to time. And um, I don't know, some of you have been to South Africa. Who's been to South Africa with us? Nobody in here? Oh, yes. Yes, Miss Christina. She, uh, she got to go see. So we love visiting their church. We have awesome worship, but their worship is a little crazy. Like their people line up in the front and just kind of like dance around in a big circle. And it's pretty fun if you ever get the chance to go with us and dance in the African circle. But would you guys make welcome tonight, Bishop Owen McGregor. We are so honored to have you. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we stand one more time when we just pray and ask God to bless us? Father, we thank you for your blessings, for your goodness. Thank you that we can be in your presence, that you can speak to us. I pray that you lead us with the power of your Holy Spirit. Pray that you touch everyone in this house. Let your blessings be upon us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Let us remain standing. Let us pray for the group that's in Israel, you know, that God will bless them, protect them, and... Um, Whatever they see, whatever they experience, it will be a blessing. And when they come back, I'm sending them a message. When you come back, come back full of zeal and full of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Lord, we bring the whole group that's in Israel at this moment. We pray, first of all, for your divine protection over them. Cover them with your precious blood. Give your angels charge over them. And Father, as they go and see the sights and visit the sights, let them be inspired and blessed and bring them back, Lord, full of zeal. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brethren, for having me tonight. And we appreciate the time that we can be with you. I want to speak on something that's been for the last few months, been quite heavy on my heart. And I'm going to title what I want to speak on, Removing the Reproach. Removing the Reproach. And I'm going to read in two places. I'm going to read Isaiah chapter 61. And I'm also going to read in, in, in Joshua chapter 5. And then we're going to trust the Holy Spirit just to, to lead us and guide us. And touch on, on areas that is very needed in our time. Let me read Isaiah chapter 61. And then we want to pray for people that need to be prayed for. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 61. For the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. Good tidings to the poor. 
He hath sent me to bind the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, <coughs> the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Now, I always say that that first part, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Is like the mission statement of Jesus. He came with a purpose. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. Sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Proclaim liberty to the captives. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. When we look at that, and we, I've used this in revivals and outreaches and stuff, speaking to people. It, it, it's a powerful scripture telling us why Jesus came. And many times we only look at the, at, at, at the natural part, the physical problems that people have. But if we look a little bit deeper, then this also addresses the, the, the spiritual problems, the emotional problems. And as a foundation, a person, a human being, consists out of three parts, body, soul, and spirit. God <laughs> is a spirit, but Jesus is the one with the flesh. So we can see in heaven, there's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God the Father is spirit, Holy Spirit is spirit. The Son, you see him with flesh. And we are body, soul, and spirit. When Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, spiritually they died. They were spiritually alive. But then they died spiritually. Thank you, Tim. I uh, have the scripture on my iPad. It's going to be easy, so I'm going to see if I can, can find it. Tim, do this one thing for me still. Just see if you can find the email that I sent to myself. <laughs> and, and, and it is called removing something about the reproach and you give it back to me. When Adam sinned and Eve sinned, they died spiritually. They were alive unto God spiritually. Now they died spiritually. God told them, the day you die, the day you eat of this tree, you will surely die. So, they died spiritually immediately. They discovered they were naked. When God came, and, and, and look, look at this, the close relationship they had with God. They heard God coming. And when they heard him coming, they, they hid themselves. <laughs> I'm just thinking, uh, God is in our midst and we don't even know he's present. But, but they had that spiritual understanding. So they hid themselves. And the first thing that God said is, Adam, where are you? God knew where he was. But I think that uh, that question was not only at, at, at what place you are, but also where are you spiritually? I've left you at a certain place. You're not here anymore. I, I've left you whole. I've left you complete. You're not there anymore. But that is for another time. So uh, he died I believe he died spiritually immediately. The Bible also says, God said, the day you, you eat, you will die. And we read in the Bible that one day is like a thousand years. One day with God is a thousand years with men. And that first generation, they never reached a thousand years. So they never reached a full day in the sight of God. They died 930, 960, whatever. But they never reached a thousand years. So they died in the day. That is how I see this. 
And then also, man was made to live forever. Now, he, he is dead spiritually. He is, his soul is not pure anymore. He's now contaminated. And his body becoming weak. Jesus came to restore us body, soul, and spirit. The moment we receive Jesus Christ, we become spiritually alive. Amen. And, 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 and this is so wonderful. It's amazing that when you've received Jesus Christ, things you re read in the Bible before, it didn't make sense. Suddenly it makes sense. And, and the things that we speak about God, when we speak to unbelievers, they don't understand it. And sometimes we become frustrated. Why can't they see what I'm seeing? Oh, we are spiritually alive unto God. They are still spiritually dead. They can't experience, see the things of God. So, so God came and redeemed, first of all, our spirit. He is busy redeeming our soul. What is the soul? I believe the soul is the heart of man. Not this that pumps in us. But, but the Bible speaks of the heart. That uh, the heart of man is wicked, the heart of man. The Bible, uh, I believe the soul is our emotions, our intellect. Uh, the real me. That is the soul. And then we have a body. Now God comes to redeem our soul. And, and when he redeems our soul, it's a day by day walk. Amen. Every day we need to repent. Every day we need to ask God to change us. A person that gets born again tonight, he's forgiven. If he dies, after he gets born again and he dies, he's, he's on his way to heaven. But you know what? Tomorrow morning, when he gets up, the, 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 the stuff that, that he did, he needs to get victory over those things. If a person was used to, 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 to cursing, cussing, swearing, all that stuff, those things will still be around him and he needs now the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome it. Amen. If a person has had a problem with alcohol, the desires for that in many cases are still there, but now you have the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome it. Amen. Amen. I know of people that, that received deliverance the same moment. People that had a problem with nicotine, they, uh, they, they come to God the same moment they are set free. But I also know of people that received Christ and for years they are still struggling with nicotine. Right. It's a walk. We are renewed all the time. And I believe the day that we leave this earth, our bodies go to the grave, our soul, uh, our soul is with God. That day we are delivered. Our soul is delivered. Every day, our bodies, God has made our bodies so that, that there's a healing mechanism in our bodies. If you cut yourself, clean it, you don't have to put anything on, just clean it, keep it clean, it will be healed by itself. If you have a cold or a flu, you, uh, you know, without taking any medicine, it might take longer, but you'll get better. That is how God has put our bodies together. But then again also I believe that when we pray for the sick, God heals the sick. So I, I see here that even our bodies must also be redeemed. As our soul is redeemed and, and our spirit is redeemed, our bodies will also be redeemed. And we experience that redemption power when we get healed. But ultimately... We, the, the complete redemption will take place when Jesus appears on the clouds of glory and the dead in Christ rise. Hallelujah. And we receive a new body. Yeah. Amen, we receive a new body. But I want to focus this evening on, on, on the soul. And one of the things I realize is that every one of us, let me say the whole human race, has been wounded in their soul at some time. As, as I look over the congregation, and I include myself, we all at some time have been wounded in our soul. I also believe that as a person get, get wounded in your body, we also get wounded in the soul. As a body get bruised, sometimes somebody punch you on your shoulder, and there will be a mark. Depends how hard. 
Sometimes you are punched in your face and there will be a mark. It is bruised. Our, our bodies get wounded when, when you cut yourself. It's open, it's wounded. Our bodies get broken. The bones get broken. The Bible speaks of a broken heart. So it gets broken. And also, when you have a sore, when you've been cut, when you've been shot, I've seen this on TV, okay? <laughs> when you've been shot, when, you, when you've been stabbed, when there's been a cut, and then the wound must be cleaned. And if there's a bullet in there, it must be taken out. But it must be kept clean, and then it's treated. But the sad thing is, when you had a cut and you don't clean it, you just put a plaster on, then in some time that wound will fester. And, and if you're not careful, that, that poison will spread through the body. And we become extremely sick. Now, now look at this in the same, the same way. If we are wounded in our spirit, we cannot just close it and cover it up. It must be healed. It must be washed. It must be cleansed. It, it, uh, you know, if, if there is a wound and became septic, you go to the doctor. They take their scalpel and cut it out and cut it open. They, they, they cut all that stuff open. Not a nice picture, eh? <laughs> it's painful. But it is necessary for the healing to take place. Amen. It's necessary. And so also with our soul, when we've been wounded, and we don't treat it, and we just put the plaster on, it, 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 it festers. And we need the scalpel of the Holy Spirit to come and cut that stuff out and bring his healing upon us. So when I read again Isaiah chapter 61, if it comes on the board, he says, anointed to preach good tidings unto the meek have sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. That is spiritual healing. That is the healing of the soul. To bind. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted. The brokenhearted needs to be healed. And, and, and what I realize in this church, let me speak to us, all of us here. Every one of us at some time has been wounded in our soul. Every one of us has been abused by somebody. Of course, different, uh, different intensities of abuse. Every one of us has, has gone through rejection and pain. Every one of us has experienced things that, that we don't want to share with a lot of people. But because we don't treat it, press it, and we push it down and pull it down, what happens is that this thing becomes, begins to fester. And at some time, if we don't ask the Holy Spirit to help us, this thing will come out. And, and it poisons our whole being. It poisons us. Just like a wound that hasn't been treated uh, poisons the body and you have a heavy fever. And if it's not treated, you might die of it. So also we must be careful that we must ask the Holy Spirit to heal us from whatever's been happening in our lives. A lot of stuff is happening to us. I don't want to go into much detail, but I trust that you get the picture. Some of us have been in abusive relationships, and we are out of that. But many times it's small things that triggers things. We have a case in South Africa now, one of the beautiful young ladies in the church, suddenly she... Uh, we, we, she was part of the choir, everything. Suddenly, she's not on the choir anymore. She's withdrawing herself. We see there's something wrong. I sat with her, talked to her. And, and this is what I discovered. That her father was very abusive to them. Physically abusive. Beating the mother, beating the children, all that stuff from a young age. They, they were living in fear of the man. And, and, and now she's a, 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 a 
a grown lady, young, young lady, 21, 22, and something happened and all these flashbacks comes back. These things happen to us, brethren, because we haven't dealt with it. Some of us comes out of, of, of difficult relationships. Even as we grew up, we, we've been hurt. And what I've discovered is many times we are hurt by the people that we love the most. Many times it's, our, it's that family circle around us that hurts us the most. It's amazing. We, we can deal when it is others. Today, in our time, what the youngsters are confronted with is this, they call it cyberbullying. A person might not punch them, might not hit them, but the things they, they, they put, cyberbullying, is more devastating. So there is, there's a need for healing. And when we can acknowledge that and ask the Holy Spirit to heal us, even when we are confronted with, with a death in the family and we don't get proper counseling and, and we don't deal with it and ask God to help us, it becomes a problem. You have heard and you know this, that when, uh, when a couple has gone through divorce, I'm using this as an example, a couple has gone through divorce and, and they want to start dating again outside of their, of their marriage. It is usually a disaster because they're not healed from the, from the pain that they went through. So you, we cannot cover these things. And this is what Jesus says, what and, and this prophecy is about Jesus Christ. He came to, to heal the brokenhearted. He came to heal the brokenhearted. He says further, proclaim liberty to the captives. Liberty to the captives. When we are, when we are hurt, when we are bruised, when, when the thing festers inside of us, it has got this, it has got this thing, it, it brings with it anger. It brings with it hatred and unforgiveness. I think these are the three most devastating things in our lives. When we allow unforgiveness to continue in our lives. When we allow anger to continue in our lives. Bitterness. But we need to deal with this. And Many times the way we respond to things is the problem. If we respond in anger, in bitterness, in unforgiveness, that, that thing that happened to us continued to have a hold upon us. And we cannot break free. So I want to challenge the church tonight that if you've been through any of these situations that I'm, I'm painting to you tonight, then one of the things is well, we must open unto the Lord. Say, Lord, help me. I need your help. I need your help. And sometimes many of this stuff are, 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 are pressed so way down. We need the Holy Spirit to, to reveal it unto us. And I, and I want to make this example. The Bible doesn't you say the Holy The Bible talks of the sword of the Spirit, okay? But I also believe there's a scalpel of the Spirit. Amen. That sharp scalpel that the surgeon uses to cut out the stuff that is unnecessary. And I pray tonight that the scalpel of the Holy Spirit will just cut out the stuff that's been there for a long time. The Bible speaks of the balm of Gilead. And I pray that the balm of Gilead will cover every wound. That there will be healing. As we continue with Isaiah chapter 61, it says, to appoint unto them that mourn, in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes. I pray this evening that if you've been sitting in the ashes for a long time, get up, get out of it, <laughs> take a wash from the Holy Spirit, the blood of Jesus, and let him dress you with a beauty. With beauty, he says beauty for ashes. Can you imagine when you sit in that ashes, you know, you, you sit down defeated, all that kind of stuff, ash all over. You know, this is what they did in the, in the time of Job, the old time. They will sit in the ash, they will throw it over them, a sign of mourning, a, a sign of being depleted, being, being broken. But now he says he gives us beauty for ashes. 
And I speak beauty over every person. And get up from where you are sitting. Get up out of the ashes. Put oil upon you. He speaks further and he says, the oil of joy for mourning. The oil of joy for mourning. One of the things as I've been this subject I'm dealing with has been on my heart for a long time. And one of the things I realize is this, that when we are down, when, when the enemy has attacked us, when all the stuff in the past comes up like a flood against us. You know, the Bible speaks the wicked has no rest. It's like the churning of the, of the sea. And, 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 and you know, when, uh, when water is placid and calm, you can look right down to the bottom. But usually at the bottom, there's a lot of muck and mud and all that stuff. But when it gets stirred, all the stuff at the bottom comes up. And in our lives also, we, we, everything has been fine. But just one thing triggers something and all the stuff comes up to the surface. And we thought we've dealt with it, but it's there in the, on the surface. So we need the Holy Spirit to cleanse it, to wash it away. But we need to acknowledge before God, Lord, I need your help. I need your help. I need your help. He says, the oil of joy. And this is what I, what I realize, that when we are down, ask the Holy Spirit to put a song of praise in your mouth. Ask the Holy Spirit to, to, to fill us with his joy. The joy that, that, that comes from the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit, you know, uh, uh, when we are so, and this is when the enemy uses and, and filtrates our minds with all kinds of negative stuff. But through all that negativity, begin to praise the Lord. Begin to worship God. Acknowledge that he is God. The oil of joy for those that mourn. The garment of praise <laughs> for the spirit of heaviness. Oh, hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? To give them beauty for ashes. Oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they may be called trees of righteousness. Trees of righteousness. Trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. This is what God wants to do for us. And I want to encourage everyone that he might be glorified. That he might be glorified. It's only God that can heal a broken heart. It's only God that can restore what has been lost. He heals a broken heart. David says, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Restore my soul. He's the one that can restore my soul. He restores my soul. And, 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 and I pray that this will happen this, this evening in this house, that God will bring restoration. And you know, a memory, our memory is very strange. Sometimes we can forget stuff. But just a smell or whatever, and all the memories come back. You know, uh, in South Africa, I think it's here also, I haven't seen it, but in South Africa they have this flavored milk. Milk they put flavor in like um, strawberry, vanilla, uh, cream soda, whatever. And I remember when I was a small boy, it was probably in, in grade two, grade three, the school at that time, one time, they, 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 a farmer gave them cans and cans of, of milk, flavored milk, specifically the, the strawberry flavor. And, and we enjoyed it. And even today, <laughs> uh, the moment I drink it, I have a flashback when I was a small boy having this. And, and, and these things happen, things trigger our memory. Just a smell, just a word, just something, act, someone acting bad, and, and, and all the stuff floods back. And many times the things that come back is not good thoughts. But we can ask God to help us. We can ask God to help us. I want to conclude with Joshua chapter 5. Joshua chapter 5. From verse 5. Amen. Amen. Because it's not really a, a church service. 
you can be free, okay? Joshua chapter 5. Let me read it to you and I'll give you the background. Chapter 5 says, Now all the people that came out were circumcised out of Egypt with Moses. They were circumcised. But all the people that were born in the wilderness, by the way, as they came forth out of Egypt, them they had not circumcised. Well, I always find that scripture very, very strange. For 40 years in the wilderness, why didn't Moses circumcise the guys? <laughs> I don't know. But this is what the Bible says. All the people who came out, out of Egypt with Moses, they've been circumcised. But all the people born in the wilderness on the way as they came out of Egypt had not been circumcised. And we know the story that that, that generation, 20 and up, they died in the wilderness. It's a new generation. It's a generation, they were not your 20, and then those new ones that were born in the wilderness. And, and, and those that were born in the wilderness, they were not circumcised. So there was a group that was circumcised. When they crossed the river Jordan, let me read, for the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness till all the people who were men of war who came out of Egypt were consumed because they did not obey the voice of the Lord to whom the Lord swore that he would not show get stuck by show <laughs> will not show them the land the Lord had sworn to their fathers that he would give us a land flowing with milk and honey verse 7 and their children whom he raised up in their stead, them Joshua circumcised. For they were uncircumcised because they had not circumcised them by the way. Why was it important for them to be circumcised? Circumcision is a confirmation of the covenant that God had with Israel. Amen? Circumcision, of course, for the male covenant that God had with Israel. So, from the time of Abram, right through, they remembered the covenant, they were covenant people, and they were circumcised. For this reason also, when Goliath confronted the, the Israeli army and David came up, he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? In other words, he doesn't even have a covenant with God. How can he defy the armies of God? So circumcision is about a covenant. So when they cross the river Jordan and the place name is Gilgal, there they circumcise all those that were not circumcised. They renew their covenant with God. It took them a few days to be healed. And when they were healed, through the circumcision, through all that stuff, the manna was still falling. But when they were healed and, the, and, and then they, they, they kept the Passover for the first time. And then they went into the fields and, 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 and gathered of the corn. The, the people on the other side, they have planted corn. But when Israel came, they were struck with fear. So they stayed in their villages, in, in, the, uh, in their cities, walled cities. But now the Israelites, look how God provides. They go and they glean the fields and they, they took off the corn. And the moment they start eating of the corn... The man has stopped. New covenant, new dispensation. Amen. But what I want to, to read is the next verse. Verse 8. It came to pass when they had done circumcising all the people that they abode in that place in the camp till they were whole. Verse 9. The Lord said unto Joshua, This day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off you. Wherefore, the name of the place is called Gilgal unto this day. I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt. What, what was the reproach of Egypt? The reproach of Egypt, Egypt was the idol worship, was, was the abuse they suffered, living for 400 years as slaves, being maltreated, second-hand citizens, or not even citizens, you know, treated like animals. Whatever, the, the worst kind of treatment. 
Pharaoh sat on his throne and he gave instructions to his, to his taskmasters and the taskmasters were extremely cruel and evil and wicked. And they enforced their will upon the people and the people had no recourse. They couldn't do anything. So, so there was a mark upon them. And, 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 and the mark was not only physical, it was a spiritual mark. Their, their souls were bruised, their souls were hurt. Their souls were broken. And one of the things I realize is this, that this is 40 years after, the, after they came out of Egypt. One of the things I've, I've, I've learned in life is that if I've been badly treated and I don't get healing for it and I, and I grow up in bitterness and anger and unforgiveness, I'm going to influence my children. And... Brother, if you have treated me bad and whatever, and, and I had a hard time, whatever, I'm going to make sure my family, my children, is going to hate you and is going to hate your family. I'm just making an example, okay? Understand, brethren? That's why there are some people today, some families, the, the, the two brothers had a problem, but now uh, <laughs> the, the children of the brothers have problems. Especially, and, and this is one of the problems with, with when one guy marries more than one wife. Sometimes there's two wives in the same house. And, and whatever else, I'm not going to go into that, but let me just use this thing of uh, bigamy and stuff. Uh, the two wives are never friends. And, and the children of the wives, they are in competition with one another. So it seems to me that this new generation with the older generation, they still had the anger and the bitterness, whatever's been happening to them in Egypt. The abuses, the hurts, the pains, everything that went with it. But when they were circumcised, God said, I've rolled away the reproach. I've rolled it away. And I pray tonight that whatever reproach Egypt still have upon your life will be rolled away. We will not hold on to it. We will not hold on to it. I want to share one of the things that, that really stayed with me for a long time. Don't tell anybody about this. We were, we were kids. Um, it was school holiday. My dad, you know, is a missionary evangelist. He was going. We stayed somewhere in the Western Cape, and he was going with a whole team, evangelistic team, he was going up north to Johannesburg. We didn't stay in Johannesburg at that time. I'm young, I'm excited, I'm going along. I'm the third oldest, George is going, Gershon is going, I'm going third oldest. And the day that he moved out, he told me, you can't go with. Now, I always had a weak stomach. Anything I eat, the others can eat stuff, whatever. They are fine. When I eat it, there's a problem. <laughs> so he told me, you have a weak stomach you can't go with. That thing devastated me. Because I thought, it's school holiday. You know, it's a nice outing. <laughs> All that stuff, I couldn't go. That thing stayed with me for a very long time. I'm sharing with you. We all, we all have stuff. And many times it's even, there, there's not, sometimes, most probably my dad thought it's the best. But I didn't see it like that. And, and most of us, we, we have some kind of situation that we just need to say, Lord, heal me. Right. Lord, heal me. Lord, heal me. Lord, heal me. When my dad passed away, that's a long time ago. But it is one of the stuff that I just want to share with you. When he passed away, that was the first death in our family. It was a shock to all of us. Uh, the second death is not, it is bad, but it's not, it's not like the first one. And all of us were devastated. God was gracious to me. I went into, uh, by the second day, third day, I went into the bedroom. I fell on the bed. I said, why? Why? And I've learned something that we can ask God, Why? I've heard some people say, you mustn't question God. <laughs> God is this great God, the big God. God has got answers for everything. Why can't we question him? Why? 
I didn't get the answer immediately, but I got my healing. I got my healing. You know, at least 20 years, 25 years after my dad passed away, George, I think he will forgive me, I say this, George, he told us one time, he said, I'm only getting over my dad's death now. We are all affected somehow, some way. And this evening, I want to pray for, for all of us. Let us just ask the Lord, Lord, you're healing. Lord, you're healing. Lord, you're healing. Whatever it is, and I pray this evening, the Lord will just show you the areas where you've been hurt and <laughs> bruised, wounded. There's an abscess that needs to be cut out, a heart that is broken. And we have the healer of the broken hearts in this house. And we have with us the balm of Gilead. When, when Jeremiah says, isn't there any balm of Gilead? He is referring to people that are spiritually wounded. Let us stand. Please. As our pastor Andrew plays the music, if the Holy Spirit has been speaking to you, I'm not going to ask you what is the problem, what is this. Just come, just come in front and, and, and just ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, heal me. Lord, heal me. Lord, heal me. I open up myself. I need your healing power, your healing presence. I need the oil of joy. I need the garment of praise. I need the beauty for the ashes I've been in. I need your healing. I need your healing. Come and stand in front and let us just call unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Children has hurt us, brothers have hurt us, sisters have hurt us, siblings have hurt us. People we work with has who hurt us. When we were at school, we've been <laughs> tormented. And the one thing we need to focus on is, Lord, I repent of the anger. Lord, I repent of the bitterness. And help me, Lord, to forgive. Forgiveness is most probably one of the most difficult things for any person to do. But it's the most liberating thing to do. When you decide to forgive somebody, you need to keep on doing that. The first time you say, Lord, I forgive, <laughs> but nothing changes. It's a work of the Holy Spirit to release and to forgive. Oh, praise you, Lord, praise you, Lord, praise you, Lord. I'm just coming and pray with you. I'm gonna, not going to ask you what it is. I'm just coming come to pray with you. Amen. just want to come and pray with you that you receive healing. Thank you. This is what I'm praying. Lord, heal every bruise. Lord, heal every wound. Lord, that abscess, that's the word I was looking for, abscess in the Spirit. Heal it, Lord. With the scalpel of the Holy Spirit, cut out the poison. Cut out the poison. And I pray, Lord, pour over us the oil of joy. The oil of the Holy Spirit. Pour over us, Lord, the balm of Gilead. Bring healing, bring healing, bring healing. You are the healer of the broken heart. You heal the broken hearts. You, you heal, you heal, you heal. And brethren, I just want to say this. We need to constantly ask God for His healing power, healing presence. It's like when you break a, a, a bone, you break your, a bone in your arm, it's not healed the same day. It takes time to sit and be healed. When you had a cut, when you had an operation, you've been cut open, you have an operation. Uh, we pray for you for speedy healing, but it must heal by itself. And many times, God can heal immediately, 
I've been in a meeting where a person said his, his leg is broken. My dad prayed for him, cut off the, the cast and his, heel, his leg was healed. That can happen. It happens. But many times it takes time. In many occasions it takes time. But we don't give up. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Just worship the Lord. Just worship. You can come and join up anytime, anytime. I need you, though my world may fall. I'm going to anoint you with oil and bless you. As I pour the oil upon you, let the oil of the Holy Spirit come upon you for your healing. Father, I thank you. I bring the whole congregation before you and I speak your healing. You heal the broken heart. You heal, Lord, the wounded soul. You restore our soul. I speak healing to Emily Bruce. I speak healing to every wound, healing to every abscess, healing to every brokenness. And I pray now for total restoration, total peace, total joy. And give us now, Lord, the oil of joy. Give us now, Lord, beauty for ashes. Give us now, Lord, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I pray, Lord, put a song of praise in our mouth. As we sleep, Lord, put a song of praise in our mouth. As we get up in the morning, a song of praise in our mouth. In the name of Jesus. against me and I pray help me help me help me help me to forgive help me to forgive hallelujah and once again come and say this with me Lord give me beauty for my ashes beauty for my ashes the oil of joy for morning Lord I ask for the oil of joy for the morning I ask Lord for the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness garment of praise now lift your hands and say, Lord, fill my mouth with praise. Fill my mouth with praise. Fill my mouth with thanksgiving. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
I think it's Psalm 92. It's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto His name. To declare His faithfulness in the morning <laughs> and His loving kindness in the evening. God bless you. Be healed and be strong. And continue to attack that thing. Eh? Continue to attack it. Two more minutes, okay? <laughs> you, might, you might know part of my testimony. I had cancer in my kidney. 1986. Kidney is removed. 1987, I came to United States for the first time. And I stayed with your pastor, Johan. And we were preaching in one of the services and I testified of my healing. That night, or early the next morning, between night and the morning. Now, before they discovered I had cancer, I got up that, that morning and I felt something heavy on my side. And then when I took Bronwyn and my kids to school, uh, they say the, the kidneys in the sack, my, my kidney was bleeding and the sack burst and I had a severe pain. They discovered that later on. So that same heaviness, the night I'm sleeping, I feel it on this side. And in my sleep, uh, dream, I wasn't dreaming, in my half awake, I said, wow, it's back. Can't say it's back. First thought. But then I, I, I began to think and I believe the Holy Spirit helped me and said, Satan, you're a liar. I am healed. Amen. By the stripes of the Lord Jesus Christ, I am healed. I am healed. And as I spoke that, I felt that thing leave. I felt it pulled out. And I haven't had a problem ever since after that. Ever since after that. A week ago, in two weeks ago in South Africa, I was sitting in the office preparing. And as I was ready to come into the church, we usually pray with, with, with my leadership. And as I got up, up from this chair, I felt a pain just under my ankle. And, but I didn't tell anybody about it. I walked with that pain from my office into the church, onto the pulpit, still feeling the pain. But all the time I'm rebuking this pain. I don't know when, but during the service, the pain was just gone. Amen. I'm relating this to say to you, we need to stand against the attacks of the enemy. When he comes with anything, reject it, rebuke it, declare you are healed, you are free in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Raymond, God bless you.